Welcome to our review on the Big Bang. So the first thing is something you don't need to know in any kind of detail, but I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on the history of the theories of how the universe began. So if we go back to 400 BC, we have Aristotle, who thought that the Earth was the centre of the universe. If we jump forward 500 years to 100 AD in Ptolemy, then he came up with the Earth-centred model and the universe was surrounded by a background of fixed unchanging stars. So kind of like just having a backdrop to the world which is painted. 1543 AD is Copernicus who came up with the sun-centred model for the first time. 1609 AD Galileo, the stars changed. So he'd actually gone against this idea of a fixed background of unchanging stars and also said that not all objects actually orbit the Earth. We're not the centre of everything, folks. And then in 1687 AD, we have Newton, who came up with a theory of gravity which confirmed the sun-centric model. So that's an incredibly quick whiz-through of the history of our universe. So what we can see from that is that over the years, the ideas about the universe have changed. And the way that most of these ideas changed was through observations being made and a bit of creative thinking to explain these observations. So in the early days, there were a lot of Greek philosophers who used to sit around stroking their beards in their togas, thinking about what they saw and what it might be that caused that. So any time we're looking at why ideas have changed in science, it's through observations and then creative thinking to explain those observations. In 1929, a scientist called Edwin Hubble measured the speed of galaxies from the absorption spectrum of the light they emitted, and he came up with a theory called redshift. So when a light source moves away from you, the wavelength of the light it emits increases and the frequency decreases. So if we look at the visible spectrum in the middle there, you can see the wavelength is increasing as you move towards the right, which is where the red end is. So, as we've said, the wavelength of the light increases, it moves towards the red end of the spectrum, hence redshift. So, if the source is moving faster, the redshift is bigger. And if the source is moving towards you, then the light would be blue shifted. So, what Hubble actually did was he used redshift to work out that galaxies in the universe were moving away from us. And he also worked out that the more distant a galaxy is to us, the faster it's moving away. The last thing we need to consider is the theory about the origin of the universe that we accept today, which is the Big Bang Theory. So what the Big Bang Theory actually says is that the universe started as something very dense and tiny, and by tiny we're talking smaller than an atom, that underwent a sudden expansion 13.7 billion years ago. So when we're talking about the Big Bang model, the Big Bang theory, that's what we're referring to. And what we find is that it's the space between the galaxies that is expanding. And we are certainly not at the center of the universe, contrary to what some people may like to believe. We are just one part of a fringe of the actual universe itself. So the Big Bang Theory isn't just something that people sat around stroking their beards and came up with. We've got two key pieces of evidence that support this. The first is cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMBR, and the second is redshift, which we've already discussed. If we consider cosmic microwave background radiation in a little bit more detail, we need to go back to the 1960s for when the work was taken out. So what we found in the 1960s was that microwave radiation came from all directions. No matter where they actually pointed their sensors, they picked up this microwave radiation. And the scientists worked out that it was radiation left over from the Big Bang itself. So the very high energy and high frequency radiation that was caused at that point that the universe came into existence has been stretched over time, so it's now in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum, which I've given you at the bottom there just as a reminder. Hopefully at the end of this video you can describe what redshift means, you can explain how redshift of galaxies provides evidence for the Big Bang, and you can explain how cosmic microwave background radiation provides evidence for the Big Bang.